Five YouTube tips. First YouTube tip. Don't take anything personally. YouTube's a game. It's not serious. Don't take it personally. If someone calls your horse face or, you know, whatever. We get comments all the time and some of them are so creative. Just have a laugh at it. The first YouTube tip is don't take anything personally. People are going to... We try and pretend sometimes we take things personally, but we don't. We're just trying to create extra drama. Don't take anything personally because you can't help people and take things personally. Otherwise, you'll constantly be feeling burned. I gave someone my time and they did this. No, no, no. Just deliver the seed, get on with the job. So don't take nothing personally. Second tip would be to be consistent. Two or three videos a week. If you let your channel drop off, people forget about you because everyone's busy. People, everyone thinks, oh, people are looking at me, you're focusing on me. Maybe they are for a few minutes of their life, but everyone's got busy lives. They've got kids, they've got work, they've got mortgage, whatever. They're not going to focus on you very long. So forget taking things personally and keep uploading at least two or three times a week. So you're constantly there. Imagine a newspaper who stopped publishing for a week. People would just go, oh, oh I'll go to some, read something else, read a magazine. They forget about you very quickly. So every week, two or three videos a week, people say, oh, I've done a video for six weeks. I'm just going to quit. No, no, no. Like, just start again today. Keep going. So regular uploads, don't take nothing personally. Third one would be look at what's trending. If you want to make money on YouTube, then you're probably not going to much, much, make much money giving tips on how to peel a banana. Oh, money should be really creative. <laughs> so doing snake videos or shark videos, the world's biggest zit. Because that's what the teenage kids are watching. Yep. <laughs> that's the big tip there. So make videos, if you want to make your own money, make videos that are trending. Just get you started. And if you're a big following, do daily vlogs or whatever. But that'd be a tip. Make viral video content. Pay attention to what's trending. A good channel to watch is Epic Wildlife. This guy, he's making like, you know, $50,000 a month. <laughs> just wearing a hat, you're talking about eels or <laughs> sea unicorns. He's just yeah. killing it. <laughs> he is killing it. YouTube's just throwing money out there. It's nuts. Absolute nuts. How much money can make on YouTube? It's a little effort. Uh, another tip would be keep your videos short, one to, two, one to three minutes, ideally, especially with viral video content, because the higher audience retention rate, the higher that video ranks in the YouTube algorithms. So, meaning if you do a video that's 30 minutes long, and people watch only one minute, that gets a low ranking. If you do a video that's one minute long and people watch 50 seconds of that, that's a high ranking video. All right? So the average view on YouTube is about three seconds long. Yeah. So you've got three seconds to engage your audience. Obviously, if you're in the health field, it's a bit different. People will go, I want to learn how to go to Thailand or unpack a bike. So it's a little bit different. You've maybe got 30 seconds in the health field. But for viral content, it's three seconds. We'll be able to click off next one. So you engage people straight away. That's why you see a lot of times they might swear in the first three seconds of a video. It's <laughs> <laughs> like video content, like a UFC fight or whatever, a guy breaks his leg, I'll be like, whoa, and they'll just be like freaking out and start. And people are like, oh, what's this, what's this guy all about? Another tip would be thumbnail pitch is very important. Thumbnail pitch is very important. So if you're female, make sure that people can see that. <laughs> if you're not female, use a female. <laughs> um, and if you, yeah, so that's sex sells. Undeniable sex sells. Um, 100%. Men like to look at women, women like to look at women. And that's just how it is. <laughs> it's not going to change that. So it's not as an excuse as a man can't succeed on YouTube, but understand what's going on and pay attention. Another tip would be. Trash talk other people. <laughs> I can't. It's, yeah, like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> if you disagree with someone, share your opinion. YouTube's a community where you get to give and take and share opinions. So it's not about being like, you know, just share your opinion. If you don't disagree with someone, if you think Duranon's a wanker, do a video. Duranon's a wanker, that's to be bananas. Whatever. You know, share your opinion. Don't be afraid to share it. That's what YouTube is. People go to YouTube to want to relate. You don't need fancy lighting or to be fully fake or whatever. That's cool. For you. That serves a purpose as well. It serves a niche. But people really want to relate to someone. You know? So as long as the lighting's half decent, the camera's not too shaky, the audio's, you know, there's not too much like wind background in the back, you know, that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get shit up. Be consistent. Another question. How do you learn about editing? I use a Mac, I've got my Mac in here. I use a program called ScreenFlow, which I find, I looked up, what's the easiest editing software for dummies? 
and it said screen flow, screen flow, screen flow. So I bought screen flow about 100 bucks and I found it very easy. I failed every single computing course I ever did. I failed high school because I failed computing. I failed fitness, my personal training course because I failed computing. I still got a job because the guy at the gym's like, you're dumb, but you can talk to people. You're high. I've got exercise physiologists that bore people to death. They know more than you, but my, my clients want to, they want to, someone they can relate to. So you got the job, Holly. Um, so I learned quickly that it's your character is what's important versus your brains. Brains are good if you're a neurosurgeon, but that's not meant most of us. So I'm pretty, I'm a bit of a failure when it comes to technology. I can read a map on a gun and that's about it. I can edit a basic video. I don't use Final Cut Pro. I don't know how to, it's too complicated for me. I'm sure I could learn it. But I've got this basic program called ScreenFlow on Mac and I'll use that. I've heard for PC users, Windows, Movie Maker's pretty easy. But it's, basically, go to YouTube and look up tips on whatever you're going to use. Yeah? It's always changing as well, new software, but it's, it's pretty easy. Once you get the it. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Seriously. I'm just like, I am dyslexic. But I learned how to make $10,000 on YouTube. So it's, it's, if I could, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm the everyday guy. I was a sick kid in school, picked last on sports day by my friends. Oh, right, Harley, you can come with us. I'm like, there's no one else to pick. <laughs> uh, all the teachers were, you know, in sports, there'd be two or three of us. The kid with the four inch goggles, you know, the guy that was overweight or whatever, and it was me. And the teacher would step in and go, oh, Harley, he's here, there, there. So we weren't, you know, people just wouldn't want to pick us in the sports team. So I'm, I'm not the fit guy at school, I'm not the academic. But if you've got a passion, you've got a goal, you can work towards it. You do what you can do. Yes. Editing software, just learn it. It's pretty simple. It doesn't have to be fancy. Look at Dan the man. Just does one take. No worries. You don't have to edit your videos. All right, let's go. I was going to, uh, I wanted to talk about healthy diet for like an athlete. Do you recommend um, legumes like lentil, chickpeas and beans? Or is that just too much protein? Healthy diet for an athlete, do you need to eat lentils and beans? You can eat them if you want. I eat them occasionally. But I focus my diet on carbohydrate. Because at the end of the day, carbohydrate is what every athlete performs on. Even if you're a 240 pound steroid up NFL linebacker, carbohydrates is what's going to let you perform. That's why everyone's drinking sugar the races or the Tour de France or if you're a ballerina, it's sugar, carbohydrates to let you fuel. Proteins are, if you want to be at you know, 100 kilos, then yeah, the excess protein in your diet will help you retain more nitrogen in your muscles. But if you want to be a you have to ask yourself, what's my goal? Is my goal to be a better dancer, a better runner, then carbohydrates is your friend. If you want to be a, a sumo wrestler, then extra fat and protein is going to be your friend. If you want to be a, a bodybuilder, extra protein is going to be your friend because you have more mass. Um, that's what steroids are for though. So it's, yeah, I eat chickpeas and beans, I have maybe a kilo a year, two kilos a year. Carbohydrates is the focus for me, myself and freely. So we like to be lean and have energy. And we don't need much protein. The less protein you eat, the faster you're gonna recover as a runner or cyclist. And for most people that want to be lightweight, I'd say make, eat less protein. You'll get enough protein when you eat enough whole plant foods. Definitely. But if your goal is to put on more size, Increase your protein, definitely. Because it just gives your muscles a whole more nitrogen. To what extent should you do that? Does that thing bother for a lot of people who... I'd say 100 grams of protein a day from plant foods. Have your rice protein and smash it in. And you just, you get swole. 100%. Yeah. But that only, that's only specific to certain sports because if I put on five kilos, my run times go down. My strength might go up with bench press, but I might probably look start looking healthier instead of like a prison war camp victim, but <laughs> my cycling and running will be going down compared to what it would now. So, and there's, yeah. So 100 grams plus a day if you want to get big, but you've got to train heavy. And you've got to be carved up to do that as well. So lots of carbs, lots of plant protein. I mean, people say, oh, you can, you can do it on fruit, and you can, but if you want extra gains, going to help. But you got to lift heavy. Heavy and hard. All my friends doing steroids, they're lifting heavy, man. They're like busting shoulders and that. Heavy weights works. But again, then you got the herniated discs and 
So bodybuilding is good, powerlifting is good, but it's got its issues as well because the body's not really designed to have that much weight on its back, you know, in my opinion. Um, you mentioned a few weeks back that one of your um, favourite books was um, Success to a Positive Mental Attitude. By Napoleon Hill? Yeah, yeah Napoleon Hill, yeah, it's great. What are some other um, books like that that you really enjoy? What some other books I'd recommend? I'd recommend getting a copy of Card the Fuck Up. Yeah. Yeah. Should be out pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good books out. Tony Robbins is a good author. I like reading his stuff. Um, it's, a good, uh, it's a good website called audible.com where you listen to audio books while you're cruising around riding your bike or work with the kids or cleaning the kids or whatever, cleaning the house, audible.com, audio books are great. I have those on my iPod, uh, iPod. it's not a phone, it's an iPod. This is what I use for most of my videos, an iPod. There's a lot of good books out there, you know. Start Solution by Dr. McDougall, um, 801010 is a pretty good book. Uh, Freely's book, Go Fruit Yourself, Positive Attitude books. Anything really. I don't think there's any positive oh, yeah. attitude books bad. Probably Tony Robbins. Uh, yeah. I've read a lot of books, but in terms of books that people are easy to get, Tony Robbins. That's all you need really. Yeah. Sometimes it's corny, but it's got some good stuff in there. But your self talk's the most important thing. That's the most important thing to work on for anyone. Self-talk is huge. I see so many people with talent, potential, but their self-talk is like, it's like this invisible barrier they just go up against all the time. You know, they just can't break through because their self-talk's like, oh, you don't deserve that, you're not good enough, you don't look good look. It's like, wow, crazy. Self-talk, man, that's the biggest thing to work on. Most powerful thing. Our mental focus can break us or make us. Quite a few people say that the more you sleep, the more tired they feel. The more, the more you sleep, the more tired you feel. Often what happens is when we get more sleep, the body gets in touch. It's running less on adrenaline and start to recover. It's like in the Tour de France, there's a 21 day race, right? Tour de France, three weeks long. The riders have normally three rest days, but every single rest day, they do a four hour bike ride. You think, what? Why don't you just go to sleep all day? If they slept all day, the body goes into recovery mode. So what they want to do is they want to keep their adrenal glands and thyroid going. Otherwise, if they stop, you're just like, you're done, you know? It's a bit like if you're washing a massive pile of dishes and you're really in the flow. And then someone says, just take a two-hour break. And they're like, yeah, oh, I need to take a two-hour break and you lose your mojo. The body goes into recovery mode. But if you keep washing and going, you're generally going. So if you're getting more sleep and feel more tired, that's just your body catching up. And generally, if you're getting more sleep, it means you cut out your stimulants. And when you cut your stimulants out, like coffee, cacao, whatever, you get more in touch with fatigue. Yeah? So less sleep means more stimulants. More sleep means less stimulants and maybe more fatigue. But eventually your body starts to cycle out of that and you're good to go. That's why I recommend go to bed 8, 9, 10 p.m. and get up 5, 6, 7 p.m. and get to go. Get day started. Try and eat dinner early, eat breakfast early, get up early. It'll change your life. You can be eating the best food on the planet, but if you're eating it late at night and going to bed at midnight or whatever, getting up later, everything's out of whack, you're not going to feel very good, even though you're eating really good, but your, your daily cycle's not very well. I know it's a fruit festival and fun times and that, and that's cool, but when it comes to daily life, try and go to bed as early as you can, and get up early, it'll change your life. It's, you know, most people who are depressed go to bed at midnight. I've never met anybody on the planet who's depressed who goes to bed at 8, 9 o'clock. It's always going to bed late, midnight, on the net, Facebook, eating late, you wake up, you know, and then you just, the whole day is just like on a back foot. So, because the cure to depression is get up at 5 a.m., drink some water, go for a walk, and do that for a month, and go to bed at 8, 9 p.m. Even if you can't sleep, put an eye mask on, and just relax. You don't need to sleep, you need to go to bed at 8, 9, 10 p.m. Just put the eye mask on, doesn't matter if it's noisy, just have darkness and relax. And think, focus on what you're grateful for. Things are going to change, big time. Big time. I've been up late the last few nights trying to get the internet working. I can feel my edge is going down. It's night, boom, nine o'clock, lights out for me. Get back into the flow. But so it's great knowing that. Sleep, rest is so important, early nights. That's what we're in nature. I mean, we live in tropical areas where the sun goes down about six, seven o'clock. What are you going to do in nature in the jungle? You're going to be stopping. You might not be sleeping, but you'll be stopped. You'll be laying down, chilling out. 
they be talking, but you're in darkness, laying down horizontal. What we do is we turn the lights back on. Hey, son, get me, get up, man. I'm not going to bed yet. And so we just throw our brosens out of whack, and then the body gives us symptoms of depression to let us know we're on the wrong track. When you're on the right track in life, you get yeah, pleasure. When you're on the wrong track, you get pain. You punch the ground with your hand, you get pain. If you don't drink enough water, you get irritated and depressed. We don't eat enough carbohydrates, you get irritated and depressed. You can't sleep properly. So the body gives us signs we're on the wrong track or right track. So early nights, early rises should be the primary focus. 90% of the year, try and go to bed as early as you can. Might require a job change, a relationship change, or whatever. But it's going to be, it's going to pay off in the long run. And then you have a greater participation in your daily reality. Mm. And that's fun. What about siestas, sleeping in the day? Siestas, if you need to, they're good for sure. Get as much rest as you need. I've got nothing like that, but generally. I find daytime fatigue is just because we haven't drunk enough water. Generally. If you, if you, what you should do, I'll say to people, if you feel like going to sleep, allow yourself to do that, but have a quart of water first. Have a litre of water first, and then go and lay down. Often you don't want to lay down. All that happens is your body's electricity is getting low because you don't have enough water. So your body's trying to settle you down. It says, look, dude, we've got enough, enough water. Let's just settle down. Let's have a sleep, recharge you. So have a quart of water, neck it down, then see what happens. If you want to have a sleep, have a sleep. But often you will go, hang on, I don't sleep anymore. What happened? Oh, I got more hydrated. So siestas are good, but have a quart of water before you do it. You probably won't need it. And then you can go to bed earlier. So often if you have a siesta at 2 or 3 o'clock, like in Spain, then you're up till midnight. Yeah, so. <coughs> if you need it, have it, but have a quart of water first. You probably won't need it. I have a question. You were talking about REM what's the deal with waking up at night to go pee is it bad is it interrupted sleep what happens i've done a few sleep deprivation studies can you hear me in the back right i've done a few sleep deprivation studies where i was a poor i was like yeah on welfare had no money they said harley we'll give you four hundred dollars if we can keep you up for 48 hours, I was like, all right, I'll do it. I'll throw it, I'll have a go. It might be a funny experience. But every half an hour, Harley, we have to get you to try and go to sleep. So for 48 hours, every half an hour, they turn the lights off. There's no windows in the room. Well, there was a window, but it was like a painting. And I got to watch all these TV programs or whatever. And they did videos. They, I was not allowed to know what time it was. So I'm in this room for 48 hours. I had a toilet next door. I, was, I didn't know what the time was, whatever. Every half an hour they say they turn the lights off and say go to sleep and I'm all wired up and then next door they can tell if I'm falling asleep they come in hey look up right. 48 hours every single half an hour oh, first shit. 12 hours no worries I'm just laying in the darkness I'm not going to sleep oh, but after 36 hours I'm just like hey look hey look and so I did this twice and I got to learn that every 90 minutes you have this sort of sleep cycle where you go into a light phase sleep where your body sort of is almost awake, but you don't remember it. And your body just checks. Is there some danger? No. Is, there, is it too cold or too hot? Do you need to get some covers off or some leaves off or whatever? Is there something biting you? you know? Do you need to go to the toilet? Do you need to empty your bladder? So you, you don't wake up needing to go to pee. You just, does that make sense? Your body is always checking every 90 or so minutes what it needs to be done. So you didn't wake up because you got cold. Your body, during a light phase of sleep, noticed you were cold and you sort of felt like you woke up and did something. So you're not, you're not actually waking up to pee. Does that make sense? You're peeing because your body needed to. But that's good. That's what we want. You put more covers on. That's good. Or you take them off. That's good. Your body's having more awareness. When you're drunk and laying on the street and you vomit and someone's stolen your wallet, you don't know nothing because you're just out of it. That's inter uninterrupted sleep. But we know that's not healthy. So if you're so dehydrated, so wiped out, you, you're just like comatose, that's not what we want. We want to go up and go and pee at night, 100%. I know if I'm peeing at night time, next day is going to be a good day. It's going to be a good hydrated day. If I'm not peeing, I'm like, Oof. Mm, I'll be a bit careful tomorrow. You always want to pee at night time, it's a few times a night. Freely pees in a bucket, I use a pee bottle, Tip on the garden in the morning, it's good. Change your life. It's, but most people go, I had to get up and pee. And they like, 
tramps around the house, turning the light on, flushing the toilet, slamming the doors, I've got to go pee again. They, they're laying in bed, they wake the car up, I've got to go pee again, this thing turned on, it work. <laughs> <laughs> well, relax, settle down. If you go and get a pig, oh, yes, hydrated. You know? It's a lot of Cost me back, or whatever, you know, like, <laughs> relax about it. People work themselves up over nothing, and then they're, then they're tossing and turning, oh, I can't sleep, and then they wake up, oh, the worst night sleeping. The whole day is just like going crazy. Just relax, accept how your body works, and go forward. It's not what happens, it's how we do it in the counts. You're funny, you're funny. <laughs> um, what do you think is best? Uh, B12 capsules or injections? And is injection suitable for everyone? What's my opinion on B12 shots or versus tablets or pills or patches? In my opinion, from cycling, we do everything by injection. EPO is injected, growth hormones injected, steroids are injected. I would say if you're going to do B12, you'd be better off, in my opinion, injection because it bypasses everything. It's just in, it's in your system. You know, like when you're doing speed, you can bomb speed in your mouth, you can inject it. When you inject it, when you, it's there. You know. So yeah. I would say you bypass everything. A lot of the natural hygienists would say, oh, it's just not good injection, right? but they're, the natural hygiene community is dead and boring. They never do anything. I said, my like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. so they just. I understand there's a big stigma with needles, but it's not an issue. Some people um, they have problems with it. From what? From I've, I've given out hundreds of B12 shots over the last few years. The only time I had one issue was one guy, he had a paranoia of needles. He had a fear of needles. So I learned to screen people first. Are you scared of needles? If someone is, I get them to lay down. So this guy, he's like a big German guy, 90 kilos of ripped muscle, and it's a machine. So I gave him a shot, and he passed out. <laughs> and it's, it's like, boom, he's heading the desk. And I thought he was Frankie, you know. And I wake up, and oh, his eyes are rolling back in his head. So I grabbed his feet, put him above his heart, and he's like, you come alive. Because what happened? I said, he's passed out. He said, yeah, I'm a bit scared of needles. <laughs> <laughs> he's all sweating. I'm like, okay, I'll let my lesson. I should screen people first. That's the only time I had an issue. Otherwise, you might get a bit of a dead, up, dead arm or whatever. But B12 shots are very safe. You do your own homework on them. Look online. Make your own conclusions. Forge your own beliefs based on your own conclusions. You don't have to listen to me or follow me. Just go, oh, yeah, I'll entertain that and do your own homework. I would give B12 shots to my friends who eat raw meat and they still, they've, got, they've got B12 deficiency after like five years of eating raw meat. And they get the test, they're still low in B12. They say, oh, it didn't work. But of course it doesn't freaking work. Just eating meat's never been clinically shown to reverse a clinical B12 deficiency. you got low B12, get on the shots. If you don't want to do tests, get on the shots anyway. It's safe, it's vitamin B. It's like a vitamin C tablet. You don't need them if you want them, do them. You know? If I had kids who were getting B12 shots for sure. I'll probably train your asses off. <laughs> is it unnatural training your kids up? Probably is, I don't know, but that's just what I'd do. <laughs> any chemists, pretty much any chemist will have them. They cost about 30 baht for 10. And it's cyanocobalamin. Everyone's going to be shooting up tonight in the hotel. We've <laughs> <laughs> got syringes all over the floors. <laughs> <laughs> and the hotel staff go, see, they are drug users. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Any farms pretty much sells them. The hospital farmers can sell them. What do you ask for? B12 shots, the ampule. Where can we get them? Any hospital pharmacy. Okay. The same hospital pharmacy that sells all the steroids in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Buy them and take them home. Maybe online. No, it's a I got them online. You can't oh, take them up your own. It's not a steroid. Like it's online pharmacies. Oh my. Which is crazy how they're so policed in the US. Like in the US. Like in, the like in Australia, it's over the counter. Oh, Thailand, over the counter, US. Watch videos. If a, if a pharmacist mm -hmm. sells vitamin B12, they just go and get a fine. How often? It's crazy. How often do you think you should? How often you should do B12 shots? Look it up on the net. For me, and freely, we do it once a month, once every two months, a thousand microgram shot. A good book to read if you want to get, get more educated on the subject is Could It Be B12 by Sally Patchlock. Could It Be B12? <laughs> I believe. And it's, you know, simple stuff. But it's just a vitamin. I'm not telling people to get on hormones or steroids or whatever. I mean, people do the contraceptive pill for 10 years and they say, oh, that's, that vitamin B12 is dodgy. I'm like, B vitamin. It's in, you know, it's alright. It's in dirt. Right, some people need it, some people don't. Do a course of B12 and see what you think. Safe. Um, what do you think about the sleep hygiene? Yeah. Because I've got a lot of people who are sleep hygiene. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Why not think about sublingual gold and waste money or time? Because it may or may not work. I'm, I'm, I'm the, I like certainty in life. Generally, I like knowing my handlebars are on tight. Versus find out they're not. I like, I get a little torque wrench, yep, that's on tight. B12 shots, yep, they work. Sublingals, maybe work. I don't know. People are scared of needles from like, eight-year-old kids giving themselves insulin shots for every day at school. Okay. So, it's just a needle. I used to be scared, but... Yeah. The first time I gave a B12 shot to myself in 2009, I always passed out. <laughs> I was sweating and shaking. I'm like, how hard the fuck up? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you all kids do this. It's just a vitamin. It's just a piece of metal. Just do it. I said to myself. What's that? Look up on YouTube. It's basically in, in your muscle. It, I, I can't explain it because people go, in your eyeball, right? <laughs> Look it up on YouTube, intramuscular B12 injection, and it'll, it'll give you all the directions you need. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we can do that, but uh, you better off just. When you want to do a B12 shot, you're better off looking online hmm. when you've got your needles and you're sitting in your room and then you've got that memory in your head. I don't want to show people go, yeah, I think I remember that. And then they're like, doing it in their main vein or whatever. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's good, but I want you, if you want to do it, do it yourself and look on YouTube first, watch the nurse do it. So then you, you're clear 100% what happened versus go, six months ago I was in Thailand, it's pretty hot. I think, it was, I think it was your left nut or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. When, it. when the time is right for you, look online to get the right directions. And then you, you've got it sorted. Because you might have your, your needle in your, 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 plate, your, your cap off the needle, you chuck it on the ground, your dog steps on it or whatever, then you pick it up and I just, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, so you've got to do a clean hygiene. Look on YouTube and watch the nurses do it. You think about what? Gluten. What do I think about gluten? I think gluten gets a bad rap. I used to be really sensitive to gluten. But it's because all the crap I was eating with it. Meat and dairy and stuff. So now I eat a bit of gluten, it's not an issue for me. Could I live on gluten? I just miss fruit too much. So no, I couldn't. But I think people say, oh, you know, like, gluten's not yeah. the evil it is. It's more of people. What, it, yeah, what people eat with it. But then again, you don't have to eat gluten, that's the thing. So people go, I can't eat gluten. Awesome, eat fruit, eat rice. Not an issue. So for some people who are really sensitive, that's fine. You don't need, you don't need to eat it. Okay. You don't miss it. Did, um, did Melanie come to Thailand? Did Melanie come to Thailand? <laughs> no, she's not She's not coming. <laughs> but she might make a guest appearance, but <laughs> she might get arrested as well. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> What's my opinion on which? What's my opinion on raw foods correcting eyesight? Yeah, Scott. Some people say they, their eyesight got better on, on just fruit, low fat, definitely. Because the capillaries, the eyes get all clogged from fats, for sure. Yeah. My vision definitely gotten better since eating more fruit and less fat. I used to be like, I see someone across the street and I'm like, is that someone I know? But my eyesight's a lot better. Trina's got better eyesight than I have, but my eyesight's a lot better than it used to be. Sure, so I think it's more so much, not such raw food, but less fat. Yeah. With the, like, the raw fuel source of that, the central or something like the raw capacity, how much better or better? What's better, 100% raw food diet or raw till four? Again, depends what raw food diet you're eating. If you're eating like cashews, for, I remember I was with Gordon Kennedy in 2006 in uh, Ojai, California, and Gordon Kennedy's eating a bag of cashews for breakfast. He's got this pain in my thing, just here. Well, that's your gallbladder. You had a pop. He's like, no, it's a parasite. <laughs> parasite cleanse. I said, no, you got to do a cashew cleanse, man. I've eaten that for breakfast. Now, he was eating 100% raw food diet. Poor health. No energy, just like always complaining about his digestion. So it depends, I mean, what raw food diet you're doing. If you're doing just like fruits and lettuce, good quality fruits, that's going to be pretty good. If you can do it, get your calories, do that. You don't have to eat rice or vegan burgers. So what's 100% raw doesn't really mean anything. Because you can eat a lot of junk. You can eat cacao, 
you can be doing like 1200 calorie a day, starvation diets, not performing well, no testosterone levels, you're starving some of the raw food diet because you won't eat anything else because you're like, I've got to eat just raw, so then you go out, you don't eat, or you travel, you don't eat, you got, you're flailing, but you're on a 100% raw food diet. So that's our ideal diet. If we get enough calories and it works good for you, do it. You don't have to eat like we do um, at all. You just eat your mangoes, whatever. So it, it depends what you're eating. Like, let's use some example of people eat 100% raw food diet. Uh, let's say Doug Graham, when he travels a lot, he doesn't get his, all his fruit, so he would smash down a jar of tahini or whatever, which is cooked anyway. I would say Doug would be better off eating some juice or some tinned fruit than having a jar of cooked tahini. Mm. Or, you know, Christina eating a lot of frozen durian or cooked nuts or whatever, because she might be traveling or whatever, or she ran out of tomatoes. But that's not going to be helpful, even though it might be 100% yeah. boy, you know, the nuts are cooked. So it depends on what you're eating. Depends on what you're eating. And if you, if you can sustain it, if you can afford it, if you like it. Some people love eating bananas for dinner. I like eating bananas for dinner. Some people are like, I'd rather die and eat bananas for dinner. Just give me some rice and beans. So it depends on the person. It's got to fit your lifestyle, your desires, your goals, your location, your finances, your caloric needs. End of the day, performance wise, pretty similar. Oh, I perform better on cooked foods because I can always get them. You know, if someone is driving a car and mm. handing me slices of mangoes or bananas or fresh pressed juice, then yeah, that'd be good as well. So that's what the real world. So I can go for a ride as far as I want, run out of food, have a 7-Eleven tamarind juice and be charging again. When I was eating 100% raw food diet back in the day, I would go out riding with people, I'd run out of food, I'd run out of dates or whatever, and I'd go, I'll see you guys later, I'm, I can't keep up anymore. I'm like, wow, Harley, your raw food diet's working for you. <laughs> so, you know, but if I was more organised or if I was in a better place, then yeah, maybe it would be better. But I was performing way better on eating cooked foods because now I can always get enough calories. I've always got enough energy. So I can always get something. I can say, right, gang, I'm, I'm going to get something to eat quickly. I can run to 7 Eleven, get a litre bottle of cooked juice, charge it up again. Or I can run around the market, try and find some ripe fruit. Yeah, so yeah. the cooked foods. Option always gives you the raw to four options, always meaning you've always got something to carve up. And that's what we've seen so many times. People are doing a 100% fruit diet, it's great, but then they're just getting undercarved and flipping out. You know? That's why you go to Woodstock Fruit Fest, where a lot of the raw food gurus have no energy. Log in the day or so because they're just not getting enough carbohydrate calories. So they're trying to be too pure, and the fruit at Woodstock Fruit Fest might not be right. It's there, $100,000 worth of fruit, but it might not be right, so you're not getting enough sugar there. So you're like, I'm eating raw food, but I don't want to talk to you, so <laughs> it's all about getting your carb ca calories in, your water, and everything works a lot better. Can you talk about um, the amount of calories? Since I've started doing this, I was doing about 4,000. Yep. There's often more comfortable moments of just slipping down to about 2.5. It might feel good, but what's the actual amount of calories? How many calories do you need? What happens if you're under it long term? Your body's got to just calibrate to what it needs on this lifestyle. As long as your emotional isn't getting the way, oh, I want to lose weight faster, so I'm going to calorie restrict. As long as you're not doing that, or as long as you're not unorganized and sort of running at a low level, then your body will quickly tell you what you need. Your appetite, just follow your appetite. If you look at some fruit and go, yeah, that's pretty good, I'm going to eat that. Then eat it. If you see some rice or whatever, eat it. Yeah. Don't calorie restrict. Don't listen to them. But what moves really? Because you listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds egotistical, but you listen to me. I said you got to stop listening to these morons who have no freaking idea, and you got to listen to me. I'm I'm the guy who looked emaciated. Right? I know. And I've got the energy. I can run fast. <laughs> 100%. Everyone does. There's no, there's no, it's like if you look at the prisoner of war camp photos, there's no one who's big bones or you know, syndrome X or that guy in the back corner who's 40 pounds. He had syndrome X. He ate the same as everyone else, but he had syndrome. No, no, no. Everybody gets lean on this last guy.
I'd have hold it by the neck. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, Tough love. with women, if you're, fight, if, you're, if you're a man and you gain 10 pounds, it's all muscle. If you're a woman, you gain 10 pounds, it's all fat. And it's not fluid retention, it's all 100% fat. There's, I, get, I, I drank a litre of water, and now I'm two pounds heavier, it's fat. Yeah, and that's what we were told. So it's, it's, you, get, you get psychotic, you get psychosis going. But you have to listen to people get results you desire. You have to listen to people who are transparent about what they actually do eat. We're transparent, we put up the issue. That's why we got flat for the Woodstock crew. It is mostly eating the same as we do, behind the scenes. But they're like, hang on, like, whoa, hey, like, we don't want that level of transparency. No, that's okay. Guys can't do that. Take this video down, apologize to Dr. Christina. Like, no, we're going to be transparent. Because this freaking works. Yeah, better eat that. It's worse. Yeah. So if you, you can, how much do you need to eat? Eat as much as you want. And move your body. Because you're designed to, people go, oh, I don't want to move my body. I just want to starve. No, no, you can't starve. You can't be sedentary. We're humans, we have to move. Imagine a kid, put a kid in a cage. What happens to the kid? Doesn't get healthy. We let kids run around, but as adults, we're like, oh, I can't run around. I've got too many conditions. And that's where we just, we stop having metabolism. So you have to move. Not, ex not crazy amounts, but you just have to do stuff. Play with the kids, walk, ride your bike new places. Patience. I didn't get as good as a cyclist in one year. Yeah, I've been riding a long time, stealing ideas from other people. But what people do is they buy a $10,000 bike, they come and train with me or whatever, and if they don't get my level in six months, they're like, oh, I'm a failure. Quit. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. It takes time. Some people's goals are closer to where they're at. Some people are 800 pounds, some people are 160. What, everyone's different, but everything works for that person if they do this program. 100%. But you might have one leg, so you're never going to run that fast. But you will achieve your goals relative to you. 100%. Because Freely used to weigh 73 kilos. And she jumped on the scales and she's like 73, and was, the thing was still going up. She stepped off. Alright? So she weighed more. When I met Freely, she weighed more than me. Yeah? She was normally dating with guys who are 100 kilos of steroid muscle. And she's dating this like, skinny guy because she wanted to lose weight. And she, yeah, she, and she trusted. And she was patient and consistent and she just did everything I said. And she's, it's good she's not here to say, oh, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Because I'm obsessed. I'm, I'm like, I can tell if a spider's dehydrated. You see those videos, I give a spider water. So it's, it's just paying attention to the little details. And in cycling, it's all about the details. If your derail is two millimeters over, your gears won't work properly. If your tire's a little bit flat, you won't get the best performance. If your seat's falling down, you might get an injury. So little things in cycling. It's a, that sort of mentality I've brought over to this lifestyle, it's the little things that people slip up. They go to bed a bit too late or they, they cheat on their diet or they, they, you know, they carry a restriction and try to force it and then they just binge out on crap. They don't tell anyone because they feel ashamed. And so I've been doing this perfectly. Like my friend who was 100% fruitarian but weighed 80 kilos and she's only short. I'm thinking, I don't know what's going on. And then the son says, what about those, the chocolate eats, mum? And, and, and the burgers are Hungry Jacks. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, she's oh, that that will surely wouldn't cause this. <laughs> I said, well, it's not bananas and dates, is it? So if you want to eat after your meal, you didn't have enough fruit that day. You need the simple sugars for your red blood cells for everything. You can have a 5,000 calorie vegan rice buffet, but afterwards you're like, I need something sweet. That means we didn't get enough sweet. Sweet, uh, sweet fruits are our most important food. We need the sweet fruits. You have to have the sweet fruits. So eat as much sweet fruit as you want. At the end of the day, when you're like, I can't look at another mango, banana, lychee, peach, I'm done. Then have your vegetables or your rice. That's my, in my opinion. Do the experiment. You know, I've done it myself and I found it way Just better. Say his name your last Fruits name. first, and if you're going to have anything else, worst. starches. If I'm, if I'm going to have if durian, you, if you I'll have that you. very last thing. Because durian digests a bit slower and yeah, and needs a lot of water. So after your starches? Oh, if I'm going to eat. No, if I'm either going to have durian or I'm going to have starches. You want to have both, though? I wouldn't have durian after starches. Or before? If I was if fruit first, then starches and vegetables. So if you had durian during the day, you'd still eat starches at night and not have a problem? Yeah. So. But I wouldn't eat durian during the day. I find durian during the day is just like. It's a heavy, man. So, yeah. But I had durian for breakfast one time in Malaysia. It was such good durian. And I could hardly ride my bike, I was just like. <laughs> 
Maybe it's lake somewhere. Say again. For me, just I could always get calories. I thought in 2010 I started getting more into cycling again. You know, and I started eating. Like, if I felt so good eating raw food, why did I, I go back to eating like I used to eat? Just to get more carb cal calories. I'm like, I want to do better on YouTube. I want to travel more, have a high level of fitness. I understand that traveling means I'll be out of my little fruit basket area. When did you make that change? Definitely helps performance because you can always get your calories now. When did I make the change? Probably 2010 when I started eating like juices and tin fruit and stuff. And then went from there. And then I'm like, hey, I used to eat rice and it was alright. And I started eating a bit of rice. It was not too bad. Yeah. Oh, I used to eat this. Not too bad. And then in uh, January last year, I did the Strava Challenge. And that's when the gates really opened up. Um, I was just feasting. Just feasting. And just still performing really well. But it was great because I had so much energy that month. I was just charging. So January last year, I really started cooking. And fitness just went right up. And in 2012, I started adding sugar to my smoothies. And boom, what happened to other day? <laughs> so it's always carved up. Always carved up. So we get a box of bananas in Australia. You eat them and it tastes like cardboard. Compared to the ones here in Thailand. I don't add sugar to my Thai bananas. They're sweet enough. But in Australia, I started adding sugar to my smoothies. Man. Performance through the roof. It's so always carved up. Did you think it's um, worthwhile still going raw for a while? Yeah, for sure, man. Do you think you benefited a lot by having like seven years? Like, I think the benefit was just learning that simple sugar is the best fuel for humans. Yeah. But we live in a world where you can't always get quality. The ideal world is a, car, a world with no cars. Or you have like a road for bicycles and a road for cars. That's not the world we're living. So I ride my bike with the traffic. I prefer sweet fruits, but I can always get them right now. You know, blah blah blah. You know? Even even here in Thailand, I'm organised a bit, but if I want something to go, you've got to hunt around for the mangoes a bit. And you might buy a bag, and you know you, you've bought 15 mangoes, you've gone through through them, some of them are bruised, some of them are thrown away, and you're like, I need some more. You know, so it can be a bit of inconvenience. But people want to do hard work, and still do it. But I want to spend time giving my time to people and answer questions. I want to be on the internet. I don't want to spend all the day like I used to foraging for food because 100% fruit isn't my goal anymore. You know, because I've got more things in life I want to do. And I don't need to do that. I can still perform at a high level, still stay very lean, eat yeah. bigger pieces. <laughs> really. And we go to a restaurant, and the, the chefs are like, "You sure you want this much fruit?" Yeah. The first time we go there, they're like, oh, um, "This is a pretty big serve. You sure? Bring it in. Bring it in. Yeah. Hold the oil a bit. Bring it in." And they see us eating, they're just like, man, we've never seen anyone eat that much food. And there's a girl who runs the Morning Glory. One night, I went in there to smash them. So you've ever seen anyone eat? Well, she said, I've never seen anybody eat that much rice in one city. No. <laughs> and she's been like 20 years in the restaurant. She goes, how, how are you so skinny? I said, like, because I eat like an Asian. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> What about the long-term effects of eating starches? We don't have much amylase to digest it. Most of it gets digested by the bugs that are in their food, producing um, vinegars and stuff like that. It's, it's really not healthy. A lot of Asian people have thyroid problems, etc., because they've been eating rice for, for so many years. Yeah, I mean, what's the long-term effects of eating rice? You know, I, I used to believe it was bad, but I look at people reversing cancer and heart disease and thyroid issues on a rice diet. Uh, Wilson Kempkin wrote a book called The Rice Diet, where he's curing people with MS and stuff. So you don't have to eat rice if you don't want it, but if you want it, it's fine, in my and opinion. White rice? Yeah, white rice. white rice. Look up the rice diet. Rice is rice, pretty much. Like. Eat what you like. But I see all these people reversing terminal I issues with it. So but the natural hygiene, say, it creates acetic acid. I don't, if it wasn't working, my performance would be going down instead of up. Some people say, oh, fruit's bad for you, you won't get enough protein. Well, it's like, when I eat more fruit, I perform better than I used to on a high protein diet. So, everyone has their theories and beliefs, but I don't see it practiced in the real world. Mm. So, I don't see anyone getting sick from rice. But if rice doesn't work for you, you don't have to eat it. You can eat fruit. I'm not telling anyone here that fruit's bad. I'm telling you, fruit's the best thing you ever eat as much as you want. 
eating the fruit challenge out and say, fruit's good, but don't eat too much fruit. It's like, well, that's not going to fucking work. Eat as much fruit as you want. And if you want grass, eat that as well. I don't salt. So I didn't question. I didn't question. Yeah, yeah. A lot of different theories on it. I don't think salt's a real issue. Yeah. If you're like hammering the salt, you got high blood pressure. Yeah, it's probably the best thing for you. But if you're doing a bit of activity, fine. It's more what people eat the salt with. But less is more. You don't need to add much salt to your food. You don't even need to eat salt. You eat enough fruit and vegetables. If you're having a salt and you're vegan, cafe, not eating the sushi. Drink your water, the activity, no worries. You know, I don't know anyone who's got heart disease meaning you get salt on their rice or vegetables. I know, I know plenty of people who died from heart disease. There wasn't many of salt in their vegetables. It was, you know, a vegan pizza. Oh, then. A lot of people. Uh, next. Yeah, speak up a bit. Speak up. My body's if you always got full glycogen stores, you can't burn fat, is what a lot of people say. Is, is, are they lean or? Yeah. Not athletically lean, maybe. So they look like they can win a marathon. Yeah. If you, the question is, if you if you want to burn fat, you have to run out of your glycogen stores first, which is a big myth. People are saying, if you want to burn fat, you basically have to starve yourself and live on nothing. But it's a total myth. If that was true, I'd be obese. Freely would be 200 kilos. It's a total myth. But the people say out there, Harley, like, my, my trainer told me that if I want to burn fat, I can't even eat carbohydrates. Ever. But it's just total bunk. But how do you explain that to people? Yeah. Tell them to go to Kenya. They yeah, say, so that's great, you went to uni for three years, ten years, whatever. Go to Kenya. And see what people eat. I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking to them. I'm saying, go to Kenya, mate, and tell me what the fat people are. Tell me what the skinny people are, what they eat. The corn, the rice, the sugar. Come to the, 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 this festival or whatever. You look at what people eat. Long term. You know? The whole that's not that's not there. That's not me saying to ride a bike fast, you have to pedal with your hands. Because I studied physics at, at university and that's what we concluded. But it's absolute bullshit. Because if you go to the nations who eating high carb diets, they're lean. But by their their judgment they should be obese. These people forget about it. They go, oh, okay, that's a cool holiday, but what if I'm overweight and I want to lose fat? Eat a low-fat diet. Your body will burn the fat over time. Your insulin levels will go down. Your body won't hold as much fat and fluid. When you've got low insulin, you get small. When you eat too much fat, nothing works properly. Your vision doesn't work properly, your dong doesn't work properly, nothing works properly. <laughs> your ability to store glycogen doesn't work properly. And that's why you always see people with weight issues, long term, always, like my mum, my mum's clinically obese. Perfect example, there's someone I've lived with for you know, many years of my life, so I know what she eats, my mum, I know what she's doing. And she's all this, this low carb stuff, honey, I don't eat, I don't eat rice, it's too high, it's pure energy. It makes me fat. Well, how can you eat beets, mum, you don't eat rice? Well, I'm just big. No, my mum. And I look open up a pantry and say, who's olive oil is this? Is this a burglar? <laughs> I open up the freezer and I'm like, who put these dead corpses in here? Yeah, what? Who eats this? Is this a, for the dogs next door? Oh, no, okay, I like to... No. People have all these theories. And all they have to do is travel to the rural areas of Thailand or Kenya with binoculars. Look what people eat. And there's no fat people in a high carb diet long term. You can't, it's impossible. Long term, for years and years. It doesn't work that way. So if you're overweight, you want to get lean, eat like lean, eat like us. 
how to explain it to someone. It's like trying to explain gravity to someone. I don't understand how gravity works. I understand it does work. You don't need to understand gravity. You don't need to understand glycogen retention and amino acid profile. You don't need to understand any of it. I don't understand it. But I know if you eat a high fat diet, you're going to get fat. If you eat a high carb, low fat vegan diet, long term, you look like one of us. Unless you're doing weights. You probably look a bit healthier. But you don't have to understand something. I don't understand how carbon fiber holds. I don't, how does this 700 gram frame hold a 60 kilo person up? I don't understand it. But I don't know it does work. You don't need to understand it. You don't need to explain it to somebody. If they're that thick, they can't see with their own eyes. They go, I want you to explain something. To say, I can't. Here's a picture of Freely. What do you think of her? To say, I, don't, I, I can't answer your question. Look at Freely. What do you, let's talk about that. But they'll, 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 they'll try and checkmate you. And go, I want, this, I, want this, I want you to explain this for me. And it's like, well, I'm not having this conversation with you. Because you're fat, I'm not. Listen to me, I'm not listening to you. And I say to people all the time, they're like, you're rude. I'm, like, I'm fucking rude, but I'm honest, I'm not going to bullshit you. Go to Kenya. I love you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that's, that's just, you know, you've got to be... I've had debates with professionals and professors at uni and, you know, in India they go, Harley, you, yeah, you're right. But I get paid by this industry, and this is what I do. And I'm not going to change my diet. I'm not going to teach that because then that would imply that I have to change my diet. It's like going to a car dealership and say, all you guys are wrong. We should be selling bicycles to people. You can do that. They're going to go, get out of here, you wacko. Get a job in a bike store. Be an evangelist for that. But I spend all the people all the time writing me, Harley, you're wrong. And I'm like, you don't have to agree with me, but you're wrong. So I, 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 you can spend all your life trying to convince people who don't want to be convinced. You might have a partner who goes, I want, you to, I, want to, I, want to, I want to see you some 10 years time and then I'll, I'll, I might change my diet. So I get a new partner. But the notion that fat people have to eat high fat diets to get lean is like you've got to clean your bike with a sledgehammer. You've got to crack your knuckles with a sledgehammer without your hands strong. And a six year old kid might believe that. But it, it, it's basically telling people good things about the bad habits. Yeah. What do you really do to uh, keep it from nightshade allergies? Nightshade allergies? Don't eat them if you don't need to eat them. No, but really used to have a sensitivity to yeah, it. What really do you do to change that? Really eats tomatoes. She gets like his mouth sores, oh, face gets all puffy. So she doesn't eat tomatoes anymore. She can have a bit of tomato paste, but that's about it. Okay. Someone had a question or something? Yeah, to deal with that. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Hand up high, I can see him. Half the line. Let's go ahead and ask a question. What's your question? Do you know where Squeamy is? He's at home looking after Pigsy. No, she, she can't eat tomatoes. She, uh, she looks like tomatoes, she eats one. Soy, soy, soy. It's good if you're a bodybuilder, but it's too much protein. 
and any of them aren't. So soy is normally like a condiment versus a staple. So processed fruit, oh, processed fruit, processed fruit doesn't mean anything because you can have you know processed lychee juice or whatever. It's not something big mac. So processed food is basically like you know, I don't eat processed food. Well, how can we still obese? Oh, well, I eat lots of healthy fats, and we still obese. So I eat a lot of processed food. So does really. It's, it's what the processed food is. A, a smoothie can be processed. Yeah, white rice is processed. Processed doesn't really mean much. What's to do with soy? Not an issue. GMO is definitely not good, but I don't know anybody's had a heart attack from GMO. I don't, I don't like GMO. It's got a lot of, who knows what's going to happen, but the people who have a heart disease, it's not from GMO soy. It's from meat and dairy, organic even. So GMO is not good, but it's also not going to kill you. But it might, like, you know, it might, something 50 years time might happen to you. But you know, I mean, it's like it's what is immediate right now that we need to focus on. A slither of tofu here and there, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But if you're just focus on more carbohydrate. If you're like hardly the love of soy burgers now, have them every day. I'm like, you need to eat more carbohydrate. Have your soy burgers now and then. Eat more carbs. So you're not craving as much. If you're craving really heavy stuff, you need more carbs. Fruits or starches. Market your ten thousand dollar retreats. Market your your book or whatever. You know, like it's marketing. It's like all the it's like <coughs> the same as cycling. You know, this bicycle brand, Cervelo, is famous for drugged up riders. Like if, you, if you're a cycling team and you have good riders, you get more sponsorship because your riders are full of drugs and you can sell stuff. People don't buy. If you're you know sell, if you want to sell a product, you get on steroids, you get held cut. Take some diuretics, get a full grip ab shot, and say, look, this is what happened to me, because I took this echinacea pill or mango sting extract, whatever. That, that's what sells. So people might say, I eat fully raw, whatever. And they might, they might. But a lot of times it's not. But when we make a transfer, people say, hey, I have that. Oh, we don't like, so if, you're, if you're an athlete, right? You're, if you're in the Olympics, if you're an Olympic swimmer, and you say, look, I'm on the US swim team, and I'm doing drugs. They're going to kick you off straight away. They're going to go, fuck, man, you, you're questioning all of our integrity as well. We're on drugs as well, but we don't know anyone to know about that. So what are you doing? So just shh, or get out. So that, people don't like that level of transparency. Well, we wanted to create it. We wanted to program that works for people. Versus tell people, you should feel guilty because you had some steam rice and broccoli for dinner. <laughs> and you need to come to a $12,000 fast food trip. That's bullshit, man. Well, how do you know that they are? Because I spent time with some people, or, or I talk with their nannies, people email me, people send me photos, or whatever. Yeah? Depends who you're talking about. But basically, you just go, you have to look at someone and go, what do they sell, and how much do they sell it for? Follow the money. Follow the money. There's nothing wrong with making money giving people health advice. There's nothing wrong with that. Take a look at how much would they charge? <laughs> what do they sell if they sell some sort of crazy products or whatever? And you'll quickly know what they stand for. And it's, it's, it's a cutthroat world out there. People got debt, they've got kids, they've got bills to pay. So people take shortcuts. Same as it's like professional sports, man. No Olympic gold medalist is doing it clean. Michael Phelps isn't clean. You know. I'm not doing it on weedies and coats. It's business, so you got to understand. It's good to be trusting. But you don't want to be naive as well. Uh, do you think it's almost imperative to eat uh, uh, raw to raw, cook uh, carbs to be high productive, highly productive, and uh, good at sports these days? <laughs> you can get enough calories from fruit. Do that. Yeah. Do both. Do an experiment. If like, if you're like. You know, if you're living on some tropical fruit paradise, then sure, you'd probably be able to do it. If you're traveling around doing national races or whatever, then maybe not. Just do the experiment and soon find out. Yeah. 
that's what's it. At the end of the day, it's all about carbohydrates. You're getting enough of them, eating no fat. Do one more question, and then we can do it again tomorrow. So I just let people want to go, but I'll stay around if people want more questions. Die? Uh, yeah, um, Diana, by the way, not die. Sorry. <laughs> Type 2 Diabetes, there's a good book to read called Dr. Neil Bernard's Program for Reversing Diabetes. It's all clinically done. Clinical studies done. Cancer wise, I've got Dr. Gerson, Max Gerson, or talk to Dr. McDougall. Plenty of personal testimonies, even Doug Graham, whatever. For sure, people do it. You know? But, yeah, he's doing it. Yeah, he's Diabetes, and you reversed it. Yeah. Wow. So you add more fat to your diet? Yeah. You can chart the blood sugar following the fat. Yeah. It took a while to do it. I went vegan, then like I can't vegan, then fruits till lunch, then lots of four, I stayed there, and it just came down. I can chart the fat, I'm focused on diet. The fat needs to weed it out, and I'm not going to cook it. I've only lost 10 pounds. They say you've got diabetes because you're fat, but that's because you're eating. You go on YouTube and there's a guy who like gives himself diabetes in a couple of hours by eating heaps of fat. I forget the video title. Who's seen that one? He has heaps of oil and cheese and gives himself diabetes oh, no. in a few hours. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's common sense stuff. The body's designed on carbohydrates. Without carbs, you just drop it down. You know? But remember, this talk will be here for every day for the next two weeks. So cool. if you've got any questions to answer today, Come back tomorrow, cool. get them Good all stuff. done. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. Good I've been stuff. Seven hours, but understand it. This is not just like last talk, this is like the start of many. So go get some food and uh, write out some questions and get through them all. Thanks, uh, Woo! thanks Charlie. Woo! I think it's the smartest man around.